Breakwater caisson wave forces of float stability and motions with Excel. Presentation made to Cope Pre Houston chapter in October 2018. Introduction. The concrete caisson designed for a new breakwater currently under construction at Nadal Port West in Morocco, a $3 billion project is used as the design example. Hydrostatic stability issues associated with the float out and installation are addressed. Free surface effects within the multi compartment structure are shown to be a significant limitation on the construction operations. A closed form solution is presented to the motions of the floating caisson in waves and swell in shallow water during installation implemented in Excel. This enables better planning of weather windows for construction and installation activities. This paper presents coastal civil engineering and naval architecture good practices applied to the design optimization of caissons typically constructed by slip forming. The location is on the north coast of Morocco on the south of the Mediterranean just south of Spain a place called Nador. We have a brief video of the site played a bit slower than it was recorded. The slip forming equipment here. Looking round to the excavated harbour area beginning here. We'll see some more slip forming equipment. Dredges in the area. Work platforms with cranes. A semi-submersible vessel that will be used for the installation of the caisson shown here. I dredge off in the distance there. The first two completed caissons in concrete are shown here and here. There's one nearly completed inside this uh, scaffolding here, another scaffold ready to start slip forming a case on here. The semi submersible barge, which is blue and white, is shown here. The, the, the top front of the barge, the bridge is shown in the background behind the caissons. The caissons will be loaded onto this semi submersible barge which will then be taken out to deeper water where it will be partly submerged until just the top of these caissons and the superstructure here is above the water. Caissons will then be floated off the semi-submersible barge ready for installation. We'll be talking about this float off and the uh, float stability of the caissons later in this presentation. The outer breakwater is just over two kilometers long. You can see the dredged area that we're looking at in the video here. The semi submersible barge is in the photograph there. The dredge is off there in the distance. And a closer up view of the harbor, you see the excavation that's been taking place. Uh, you see the cut earth around this area and our caissons taking shape in this area here. This is a typical section through breakwater. Uh, the Nador caisson type 3 is shown. Its width is 30.09 meters. The concrete is shown in the light blue gray color. There's a wave wall that sticks up 9.5 meters above the low water level. Uh, internal walls, there's five shown in this cross section. It's set on a rubble mound which is built on the seabed after it's been dredged, filled with sand which has been vibro compacted, and then this mound has been built. We show the process of analysis using Excel input the design wave data and the geometry first but remember that considerable effort must be placed on determining the wave the design wave characteristics the main parameters for wave load calculations are the significant wave height and the peak wave period with the return period say of 100 years as selected for nador some of the main parameters are shown in this table 
the key issues are wave significant height and wave peak period. Some of these numbers are just required to draw the geometry, which we see here. This is drawn in Excel. Uh, the wave pressure is calculated on the ocean face and the bottom of the slab for the design cases shown with various information about safety factors that we'll talk about later. The additional geometry you need is shown here. The variables are include density and principal dimensions. The characteristics for the pressure calculations are shown here. And now we introduce the um, the coefficients on significant wave height to get design maximum wave height, but we have further um, multipliers now that are being used to compute the crest elevations, which become the driving terms for the analysis. Next, the intermediate step, we get unfactored results and here we get safety factors against sliding and overturning using the pressure diagrams we've seen created previously. But these are unfactored, are quite high safety factors. Then we introduce the partial safety factors and these are going to be those that were used for NATO for Pianc design and then we get the final factors of safety against sliding and overturning. So the base case analyzed, we have the 1.88 now is the safety factor factored against sliding and 1.65 is the safety factor which has been factored against overturning. We can look at the sensitivity of these safety factors to our choice of significant wave height and our choice of the peak energy period to go with that wave height. And we see that if we increase the wave height by 25%, the safety factors go down. If we increase the wave period by 25%, they go down. So the lowest they would get if both the height and the period are reduced 25%, are chained 25% are these numbers here, which are not really acceptable. So it's a quick way of looking at how the selection of wave height and the selection of wave period influence the final safety factors and quickly organized in Excel. So now we come to a float stability first case we, we see here another Excel chart and we see a caisson that's floating. Uh, so this is the installation stage. It's, it's got very deep draft, 18.46 meters. So typically the caissons are constructed on land and floated out to the final destination. At Nador, a summer submersible barge is used, as we saw, to load each caisson that's been slip formed on the shore. And the barge is ballasted down and the caisson is floated off. The caisson is then towed to its final position and ballasted down onto the prepared foundation. But during all this, the afloat stability is critical. Um, a lot of information is given on this slide and everything is tied back to the simple input numbers we've seen on the Excel worksheet. So now we see that here on the left, we've got a plan view drawn with a CAD package. And on the right, we've got a plan view drawn with another Excel chart. And we see that the base slab on the left here is wider. And we see that the same thing on the right. The base slab is wider on the bow. Sorry, on the side that's close to the ocean. The harbor side is what we're calling the bow. So we have to put in these cells indicated in blue some extra ballast water to make it float even um, because of the extra weight of concrete we've got on the other end. 
Are we going to look at changes? Can we make it lighter by reduce the draft by making it lighter by reducing the number of internal walls? Um, can we do reduce uh, other things? So the, the basic input we needed for that last slide is only the yellow cells had to be changed here. Everything else was already there from the wave force analysis for the in situ. And two numbers here, the trim water we've used to keep it level was 2.9 meters. And the main ballast we had in the, in the cells was five meters of, of water. Um, so the empty case isn't stable without the internal ballast and the simple simplest ballast is going to be pumped seawater. So the data is shown on the left as we saw for previous cases two slides ago and there's five meters of water in the internal cells and there's an extra 2.9 meters of water in the end cells. So this is the overall picture of, of what we've got and this is what the analyst could see on the screen all on one computer screen and we, we go through the areas of the screen. This is primary input and remember just the yellow cells have to be edited. This is the secondary input this allows specification of the pump package on the the top or any other stuff that's got to be added. Um, this is the overall picture of longitudinal stability. This is the plan view and here is the transverse stability picture. Then in, in this area we've got naval architecture small angle results. In this area we've got large angle results for stability and float stability. And in, in this area we've got large angle stability checks, con conventional stability checks. Now we see a, a stability situation where the, the volume of water in the but in the compartments has been reduced and there's no trimming water and it it doesn't float on an even keel and we, we note some of the things here in this picture the large trim angle needs correcting well we think we know how to do that by adding ballast in the in the trim tanks the um, trim is 8.55 degrees it's immediately obvious from the chart. The longitudinal GM is good, so the it's good that we've got a positive number there, and we can calculate this angle by small angle calculations. However, the transverse GM warning is negative. This is bad. This is very bad. And a large list angle is reported. You can't see the list angle in this picture, but a large list angle of 20.4 degrees is reported. And this picture tells us the deepest drafts if it was, if it didn't have that list. And it also points to where the water is in the tanks with three surfaces. Now looking at the other direction, the picture where we see the large list angle um, the, the hydrostatic equilibrium is found, it's stable at this angle. Um, even though the transverse center of gravity is zero, the caisson is listed to this angle or healed 20.4 degrees. There is an unstable hydrostatic equilibrium position at zero degrees, but it would quickly, with any slight gust of wind, um, lull over to this angle. So this is called the lull angle and it's because we've got a negative transverse GM and we still see the free surfaces inside the compartments. Uh, we got severe warnings if that does happen on our main input screen. We get these warnings in red. So um, we get red background with red text and we know that we can add ballast water again to the trim tanks to get it to sit on an even keel without um, being trimmed. 
So we do that, and all we've done is add that 2.9 meters, and suddenly the, the red warnings have gone, but the cell background is green and the, the words are still red. So these aren't failures completely. Um, 2.9 meters of water ballast has been added to the harbor end, and the cells um, where we saw before, and the trim's been reduced. But it happens that we've just got enough change in the centers of gravity that we've just got a positive transverse metacentric height. It's less than the target that I would set of one meter would be the STA minimum recommended metacentric height for this structure. Um, however, the list angle is zero degrees at the moment. Uh, the GM is less than one meter, my criteria. And the OCDI, the Japanese criteria of less than 5% um, or, or, or GM to be greater than 5% draft hasn't been met. So we failed that as well. We're back to the original starting conditions with a draft of 18.46 meters and all stability criteria satisfied. We'd like to get this draft smaller. We could reduce the amount of ballast we're carrying. We'll do we have 5 meters, we'll reduce it to 3.5. That has the effect of reducing the draft to 17.24. So we've gone down over a meter. We could reduce the number of transverse walls. We, we need to get this thing on location. Can we afford to reduce the walls? We'll try three instead of five. So we see in the plan view the number of walls has changed, the weight distribution has changed, the draft is certainly reduced, but we've got too much trimming ballast. We'll reduce that from 2.9 to 2.1. We now see we've trimmed up, our draft is about 16 meters. We're getting a warning on the GM it's less than the one recommended by STA, my company. It's still okay by the Japanese OCDI rules. We'll try reducing the number of longitudinal walls from three to two. Everything looks okay. We've reduced the draft now to about 15.1 meters. We look okay. We're still not violating the OCDI rules. We're violating the one meter GM rule that I suggest. We'll try one longitudinal wall. It still passes, but now we're violating the 5% rule for the Japanese. If we then Try and get rid of all longitudinal walls. We have very large internal compartments, transverse, big free surfaces, and lo and behold, we become unstable. We no longer can stand up, but we find an angle of equilibrium of about 40 degrees, and we see all these red warnings about violating metacentric heights. Here is the classic writing arm curve, the GZ curve, also shown as a 100 knot wind higgling arm curve. And we've got the stability set back to have the baluster shown in this uh, table here. We, we get classic stability information from the program and classic stability checks. We've Past all checks except this particular one, which is not particularly important for this case on and doesn't relate to the wind anyway. 
We will pass the main checks related to the wind. Parts of the STA program bar mark for motion response in waves are built into this uh, caisson analysis. So here we see um, the response that would be expected for waves with attack angle of 45 degrees, uh, wave height 1.5 meters. Uh, on the case last analyzed, in fact, everything changes throughout the program whenever any one variable is changed. So this graph would keep redrawing itself in the background. So it, it's uh, natural hit, even pitch periods are calculated uh, based on shallow water theory, particularly important for the heave. Um, the wave height and period direction shown on the screen and you can quickly change those and results for all six degrees of freedom are shown graphically and tabulated. It, it is based upon some quite clever stuff in the background which is all closed form solution hydrodynamics so the for each degree of freedom the diffraction and proud cross forces are discreetly calculated for wave attack in the primary plane of motion at a range of wave periods. Mechanical admittance is calculated and the dynamic response is computed. So uh, all, all the data behind these curves, in this case just for pitch motion is shown, um, and, and you get this dynamic response as a result. Then the program interpolates intermediate angles, which are the prime angles for head or beam conditions. And some of the integrals that it has to solve are shown here. So in summary, you get all, all these bullet points, but the, the main point of this uh, presentation is to basically say, with Excel, if you know what you're doing, you can automate and improve massively any design process. But as with everything in engineering, always check the results with experienced engineers and naval architects. It's easy to make mistakes in input data for anything. It's so easy for an inexperienced person to put in a number which an experienced person would know to be wrong and, and get results which just you can't tell if they're really sensible or completely silly.